One question I get a lot is, can I wear braces with Revive? The answer in my view is no. Today I want to explain why I think braces are bad and why it's not really a good idea to wear it with Revive, but rather it's better to just take them off and wear Revive instead. Some people are very familiar with braces. I think some people aren't. So what, what are braces? What do they do? There's a few different components to braces, right? And, and I've never worn braces, so this is just based on, you know, common knowledge. They have brackets, which serve as kind of anchors. They've got arch wires, and then they've got elastic bands. And they put this on the teeth. Braces can be metal, they can be clear, they can be lingual, they can be... So different types. And the core belief is that this triggers bone remodeling. And pressure is applied to a tooth. The bone cells break down the bone tissue on the compression side and then build new bone on the tension side, right? So this is the underlying kind of belief about how you can just move teeth in bone, is that as building bone. What do I think happens when you do braces? So in my view, braces flatten this curvus B that I talk about. But some people think like, I refer to that, like the braces literally pull them down, you know, pull the curve flat. Like, and that's often not the case. Rather, the mechanic is a little bit different. The mechanic is the fact that the teeth, you know, there's cusps on the teeth, right? So you got like an upper cusp, like say it's like a molar, which has four cusps and a lower, and they kind of slide up the cusp and down the cusp, right? So it slides, when the jaw slides forward, this lower slides forward along the cusp, right? And when it, when you put your head back, the jaw should move back and this slides over the cusp to the upper teeth back. And so these multiple positions should be supported by the cusp to the teeth and the arch curve of speed, right? Because the curve also impacts this. When you do braces, they generally don't understand this, right? Dentists forget and they just think like, oh, teeth can just go together in one single position. Like you close your jaw, that's where I'm gonna put your teeth. And so braces go ahead and move the teeth and they forget that like you need these other positions and that is how the soft tissue gets screwed up. Because if you just lock a single position, then the soft tissue that I talk about caves in and the skull kind of deflates and crushes the skull and the brain and then the brain gets compressed. You can think of the mechanic behind braces, the biomechanical collapse that is caused is no different from when I described veneers or indexed bites. All of these things create biomechanical collapse through the same basic mechanism of assuming that you can just lock the jaw in a single position. So it's not that like you're taking a brace and you're like you're pulling the teeth, which is like when when that this is the way the kind of dentists think about it, right? When they talk about curve speed. That's yeah, right? and, and so like if you ask them, hey you're gonna flatten the curve speed and they think literally like, oh I'm not gonna take the brace and then pull down the teeth. So no, I'm not gonna flatten the curve speed. But they, they're looking at it from very different angle. Like they don't understand what I'm talking about. The fact that the jaw needs multiple positions supported by the teeth. And how do I know that the jaw needs multiple positions? But because I did start in 2014. And I was wondering why, no matter where I put the jaw, I would go in circles. So I did this for years. And I tried to find the ideal bite. And I realized that there is no ideal bite. Like I would get a little better for a little while and then I would get worse. I figured out through several years of experimenting on myself that you cannot lock a single bite position and be healthy. It will eventually get worse. A healthy mouth will always have you know, multiple bite positions supported. Luckily, there's a bit of a hack, which is that if you raise you know, the height, the vertical, and you keep it flat, then this will stretch the soft tissue. Let's talk a little what happens after you wear the braces, right? You finally like a year or several years go by, you take off the braces, they ask you to put on a retainer. Problem with the retainer is you've now set your teeth in a position with the braces where it only supports that one position, right? And then so you're forcing the teeth to stay there. By forcing the teeth to stay there, you're kind of, remember that like the teeth are no longer supporting these other positions and they're not going to because you're forcing the teeth to stay exactly where they are, right? Whereas if you took the retainer off, yeah, your teeth would kind of revert, but at least eventually your teeth, because of the, the natural forces of, of the skull, would eventually kind of like create a, a functional bite. And so your collapse would start to plateau out. Whereas if you just continue to wear the retainer, most likely like you're going to accelerate your collapse. Uh, your, your collapse is going to keep going at a pretty rapid rate. 
because you're not allowing the teeth to adjust naturally to where the skull wants them to be. And there is one semi-exception to the braces rule, and this is the fact that a lot of dentists are using what's called composite turbos, and they often like paint them a color like blue, and they're like a little bump. And they do it to lift the bite when you're when they're doing the braces so the teeth move easily without kind of running into each other. Now, if you wear this composite turbos, it adheres to my two rules. So it adheres to the fact that, you know, you're adding vertical and you're not locking a bite. And so I believe, and I haven't like seen a lot of examples of this, but I believe that if you work on composite turbos while doing braces, you would not experience any biomechanical collapse. And therefore, if you continued wearing the turbos when you took the braces off, you would never experience biomechanical collapse. But if you were to take them off, then yeah, like you will have changed the teeth and therefore you're not supporting these different bite positions and the tissue comes caving in. So what can you also conclude from this? You can conclude that logically, if you don't collapse while changing your teeth with braces by wearing these composite turbos, it's not about the actual position of the teeth. I'm basically saying like you retain your structure as long as you're on these composite turbos, even though you're messing up like where your teeth are and they no longer fit. Because regardless, if you wear the turbos, the only contact is going to be on that turbo, right? When you wear turbos, it's the only contact in your mouth. Now, can you wear braces while wearing a mouth guard like Revive? I view no. Why? Because when you, when you wear Revive or any mouth guard, the teeth are always moving like every day. You're improving curve of speed. And that would be like the natural force on the tooth by stretching this soft tissue that I talk about. But the minute you wear braces, you're not allowing that to happen. So you're kind of like the mouth guards maybe trying to pull the tooth in one position, one direction and the braces might pulling it in a different direction. And when you're pulling something in two directions, you know, that's not good for the tooth. Like that's a bit like trying to wiggle the tooth loose. So if you wore braces with a mouth guard for an extended period of time, I would not be surprised if your teeth loosen a bit. And therefore, I don't recommend wearing a mouth guard while you're wearing braces. Rather, wait until you take it off and then wear the mouth guard instead of the retainer. And yes, your teeth will move. You know, if you wear a mouth guard instead of the retainer, your teeth will move. But it is putting a stretching, expansive force on your palate. And therefore, they should like more room is being created. And so therefore, they, they shouldn't just go back where they were, right? Like they will move to where the skull wants them over time. But if you're stretching things out, like things should line up you know, in the longer term. To wrap up, I like to say that orthodontists have a fundamental flawed assumption. They assume that the human body is stupid, if you think about it. They think that wherever our teeth are, that's just like, you know, like the, the body messed up. You know, like, oh, things screwed up and the, the teeth looks crooked here. And they were, I can just take it and I can move it over there and it looks prettier over there, so I'm going to leave it, right? I think that a tooth, even if it's crooked, is exactly where the skull wants it to be because this the body is very, very smart in how to survive and it will compensate to survive. In my way of thinking, like I would never try to override what the body has naturally done to a tooth because that would be assuming that I am smarter than what the body is doing to survive. And that, like, I've generally seen that assumption to always be wrong. The body is always smarter. The fact that these or that honest think that they can successfully play God, like, I think that that's a massive fail. And you see, like, all these people screwed up, you know, their patients as a result. And so my saying that I like to say is a tooth that is untouched by a dentist is exactly where the skull wants it to be, regardless of how not pretty that is. Doesn't matter. Like, that tooth might be, like, all ugly, but it is there because the skull wants it there. Right? And so it's probably supporting these bite positions and is therefore like keeping you healthy. So anyway, hope that helps. Thanks.